In the last video, we looked at a timeline of the Big Bang, which describes how the universe started in this incredibly hot, dense state, and this uh, the universe then expanded. This is the space itself expanding. This isn't some matter that's expanding into empty space around it, but space itself expands. And as the universe expanded, it cooled, and various things happened. We had the production of the first atomic nuclei and the first atoms. We have the period when the universe went from opaque to clear. And we have the production of the first stars and galaxies and heavier elements produced in those stars, all the way up to the universe that we see around us today with uh, galaxies that are, that are still expanding. And this is an interesting picture of our universe, but we have to ask what evidence do we actually have to support this theory? And we're going to just do a brief overview of some of the evidence and go into more detail on each piece of evidence later. But to start, we look back to the 1920s. And in the late 1920s, a guy by the name of Edwin Hubble, uh, who the Hubble telescope was named after, in the 1920s, he was observing distant galaxies, and he was noticing that these distant galaxies were all moving away from us. So galaxies moving away. And not only are the galaxies moving away, but he noticed that galaxies that are farther away were actually moving away from us faster. So the farther away the galaxy was, the faster away it was moving. And this was the first evidence that the universe is expanding. And not only is the universe expanding, but this, uh, this characteristic expansion of more distant objects moving away more rapidly is characteristic of the type of expansion we would expect in a Big Bang situation. So this was some, some fairly solid evidence, but this still wasn't enough to convince many astronomers that the Big Bang actually happened. And throughout the, the 40s and even the 50s, there were a lot of competing theories to, to the formation of our, our universe. However, in the 60s, a new piece of observational evidence came into play. And this corresponded with the point in the universe where the universe became clear, 380,000 years after the Big Bang. So before this period, the, there was light moving through the universe, but it was like moving through a fog. The light couldn't make it very far before it would hit, uh, hit one of these atoms and, and be absorbed and re-emitted and, and other things would happen to it. But when the universe suddenly became clear, then these photons could now move freely through the universe and have moved pretty much unimpeded since that time and are still can be still be seen in the sky today. And this is referred to as the cosmic microwave background or CMB. And this is a picture of this cosmic microwave background. This is the light that is left over from the Big Bang, from when the universe turned clear and this light could actually uh, move freely through the sky without being affected. And this, this uh, CMB is almost looks exactly the same in every direction. These darker blue and, and yellow and red bits are, are greatly exaggerated. Uh, these are just correspond with very, very tiny density fluctuations. And it was actually these tiny density fluctuations that eventually collapsed under gravity to form the first stars and galaxies and clusters of galaxies. So we're looking at an actual picture of the very early universe. And this is what convinced most scientists, the, the vast majority of the scientific community, that some manner of the Big Bang actually happened. So we have this cosmic microwave background and the, the small density perturbations in this. And more recently, using computer simulations, we can model how these small density perturbations actually evolved into the very early galaxies. This is a picture of the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, and it is a very, very small part of the sky looking 
very, very far away, the, some of the most distant objects we can see. And some of the galaxies in here, all of these little points are individual galaxies. There's upwards of 10,000 of them in this picture. And these galaxies correspond to a time around 400 to 600 million years after the Big Bang. So right in this period uh, when the first galaxies were, were being formed. And we can look at this, this structure that we see in these galaxies and match that up with, with the predictions that we have from computer simulations of the Big Bang. And we find that they match quite well. So this looking at the large scale structure of, of galaxies and clusters of galaxies provides more evidence that the Big Bang actually happened. So we can look even farther back, back to this period where the first atomic nuclei were produced. And this uh, period when the first hydrogen and helium and lithium atoms, or sorry, atomic nuclei were produced is referred to as Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Nucleosynthesis. So in the Big Bang, what atomic nuclei were being produced? We have synthesis for produced. And a lot of these uh, elements have been left virtually untouched since the very early universe. So if we look at in the sky today, the relative amounts of hydrogen and helium and lithium and, and deuterium, we can actually say we see how much of these elements are actually out there, and we can match that with the predictions of the Big Bang Theory for what elements were actually produced during the Big Bang. So this provides uh, another piece of very strong evidence that, that uh, the Big Bang actually occurred. So we see a lot of different pieces of evidence that support the Big Bang Theory and, and that the very early universe was in this hot, dense state. However, there are still a lot of open questions with the, with the Big Bang Theory and, and with uh, cosmology in general. Uh, for instance, if we look at the rate that the universe expands at, we can get a sense of what material must be in the universe. Uh, if the universe expands faster or slower, that tells us something about how much matter or radiation must be there. And what we notice is that the rate of expansion of the universe doesn't match up with how much visible matter we see, how much matter we see in clouds of gas and dust uh, in between stars and in the stars themselves. So there's some kind of mass that's out there that we haven't been able to directly observe yet. And this is referred to as dark matter. So one of the big questions in cosmology is, what is this dark matter actually made of? And, and can we detect it in the lab? We can indirectly detect it in a number of different ways, but we still want to know exactly what this is and learn more about it. Another recent observation, which is fairly strange, is that the expansion of the universe seems to be accelerating. And you'd think that as the universe expands, it would gradually slow down, but something seems to be driving the expansion of the universe to, to go faster and faster. And we refer to this as dark energy. And we don't, again, really know what this is. So we, we just have this term dark energy that we, that we use. And one of, the, uh, one of the goals in cosmology is to actually identify what this is. Also, in the very, very early universe, in the first exact moments of the universe, we really don't have a very clear idea as to what began the Big Bang. We can say that it was in this hot, dense state and expanded from there, but we don't really know how it got in that extreme hot, dense state. And there are a number of mechanisms that have been proposed to describe what happened in in this time period, like inflation, which, which uh, some of you may have heard mentioned before, a period of extremely rapid expansion. But a lot of these are have some circumstantial evidence and, and some theoretical evidence that these occurred, but there's very little uh, direct evidence as to 
what happened in these very early parts of in these very early times in the universe. Now, even though there are still these open questions like what happened in the very earliest moments of the universe or what is the nature of dark matter and dark energy, even though that there even though there are still these open questions, does that mean that the Big Bang theory is wrong? No, it just means that there are still parts that we're we're looking at. Also, does it mean that we'll never understand what happened in this very early universe? No, we are still developing theories that describe what happens in situations, uh, what physically happens in situations where we have energies that are this extreme and in this small, in such a small space. So we are still working on, on describing the very, very early points in the universe, and there are still open questions. But even with all of that, the Big Bang Theory clearly describes a lot of the observations that that we have currently been able to see and and it has been an extremely successful theory in that regard and in the the rest of this video series we'll uh, continue to look into how the big bang happened and more of the details of what evidence we have for the big bang <laughs>